Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. All right, this is about Kovalev Ward 2. Uh, no excuses, coming up this Saturday. Uh, this is going to be my official prediction video. I also want to talk about that final press conference and, you know, the issues that happened there. Um, and really briefly about the, the uh, well, not really briefly, but briefly, about the uh, first fight because I literally haven't watched the first fight since the week it happened uh, because I was just disgusted with the decision that I, I just refused to watch it. I watched film studies on it, of course, uh, several different ones and several different times, uh, but the fight itself, uh, no. So, you know, I was very, you know, I, I remember what I thought, you know, but I hadn't uh, seen it in so long that I really needed just a refresher. So I watched the whole thing, you know, no slow down or speed up, just regular speed on YouTube, the uh, one that's on um, HBO's YouTube channel, uh, which is in high def, it was great quality. Um, and for the, and one thing I noticed, B was taught, tell when he was saying, you know, that uh, he... Ward wasn't the A side, um, you know. Main events was definitely the lead promoter, and that's because main events can't promote for shit. However, you would have never guessed Kovalev was the uh, A side by listening to those commentators, and don't no one can tell me otherwise. I mean, please, if you listen to him, Kovalev would land three beautiful shots. Ward would graze them. And they would just, they wouldn't say one word about Kovalev's punches, the three he landed or whatever, and they'd brag for literally like seven seconds about this grazing shot that Ward landed, and they would call it like a devastating shot. It was unbelievable. They just ignored all the work, which was brain brainwashes people. We know, we know this, you know, that's why they do that. Uh, like, if they want a guy to win, they're going to constantly dick ride that guy and tell you all the great things he's doing and ignore the other guy. That way, when the decision comes down for the guy they're dick riding, it's like, yeah. All that they, I mean, all these experts were saying he was kicking his ass the whole time, so, yeah, he, he must have won, you know? And they do that. I mean, we know they do that. You know, plus you got Max Kellerman on there, and admittedly, Ward is his favorite fighter, so, you know, come on. Uh, that, that's a little bit of a fucking, you know, joke. I mean, but... <laughs> it, it, it was ridiculous. Uh, I rescored it, giving Ward every benefit of the doubt. Um, I, I couldn't see what Letterman scored for uh, rounds 11 and 12. Uh, I don't know if they showed it or not, but uh, they definitely didn't show 12. And Well, I turned it off before the decision, so maybe they did. I don't know. But I know he gave them 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, 9, and 10. That's fucking 7 rounds and, and a knockdown in there. You know what I mean? Um, I gave Cove... Uh, here, I got my sheet right here. I gave him 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, I gave, uh, seven to Ward, I gave eight to Ward, uh, nine, I gave, uh, to, to Kovalev, but I wrote swing round, I, I think that, that, you know, I'm giving him every benefit of the doubt, uh, I don't, he didn't really do anything, you know, significant, uh, his, his shots were nowhere nearly as effective, no, they weren't effective at all, truly, um, 10, clearly a Kovalev round, uh, I gave 11 to, uh, I gave 11 and 12 both to Ward, and wrote 11, could have been a swing round, um, so I gave him Ward four rounds at best, once again, and that's, anyone who's honest, that's the most you can give the guy, with giving him every benefit in the fucking world. You know, we've heard how many people say that same thing right after the fight. They were giving them every break in the world, and the most they could come up with was four rounds. You know? Um, now, if I wanted to give him um, round five, 
because I, I did say five could have been a swing round, but I was really, like, giving him every benefit. He didn't fucking win that round, please. Um, uh, it just didn't. Um, but from, I was right, they were showing the judges, you know, um, and what they were giving them. Uh, round nine, ten, wait, round seven, eight, nine, ten, and I believe 11 and 12, every judge gave, uh, definitely rounds 7 through 10, every judge gave those rounds to Ward. Like, B, when me and B were talking the other day, he said only two of the judges gave, uh, or, uh, two of the judges gave Ward round 10. Actually, all three of them gave him round 10, which is asinine, you know, and I don't know how anyone could have even watched that on first viewing and thought that Ward won that. He got fucking his ass kicked that round, um, like, bad. Uh, I think Ward's best round would have been, um, I think I had it as seven or eight. Seven or eight, I thought, was his uh, best round. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, even Max Kellerman said, you know, right off the bat, that Kovalev took round ten. That, and he's the biggest Ward fanboy in the world. You know, so it was like, how could all three judges score that round for Andre Ward when the biggest admitted fanboy in all of boxing media gave it to Kovalev? You know, knowing that that round, you know, would probably be, would, would have been the reason that Ward would have lost. I mean, and that's, and for for people to pretend that, like, oh, there there, there was no fix. Do you guys forget the fight before that with uh, Darlis Perez and Maurice Hooker when Hooker lost every fucking round and won the, and won? Like... Come on, they, they they fucking fixed two fights in a row. Don't don't tell me that's just judging. You know they look they score criteria differently. No, fucking Prince and Dubin fucking paid them fucking judges to make both of their fighters win. And I'll get to what Dubin said at the press conference. Actually, mm. wow, is that hot? Oh, that was hot. Um, but uh, one thing I noticed uh about how the commentators were just all over Ward, right? All over his dog, all over his dick. But then, in the vet, you can go watch this for yourself. In the very beginning of the 11th, okay, Ward's getting extremely dirty, so Ward, or Kovalev, just pushes him back, like, doesn't push him, but he walks him into the corner, and Andre Ward straight up, uh, remember, I hadn't watched this in forever, so Beeb asked me, did he elbow, uh, Kovalev, uh, I, I said, well, you know, he kept, he, I said, he tried, but, you know, uh, Kovalev kept pushing his head down, so he couldn't, well, and he actually did elbow him a couple of times, uh, but the, the most blatant one was in the, the very beginning of the 11th round, uh, he got fucking cracked, and then started getting extremely dirty, mauling Kovalev, so Kovalev walked him back to a corner, and Andre Ward just goes, BAM! And elbows him right here on his head. And Bird jumps right in there, and he's like, whoa! And even, you know, he, he freaks. The whole crowd erupts and starts booing Andre Ward for elbowing Kovalev right in his fucking head. Alright? So, yeah, he elbowed him blatantly right in his damn noggin. Alright? Bird only warned him. Just warned him. He just goes... That's it. Just like, hey, try not to do that again, okay? But that's not the worst part. Not the worst part at all. <laughs> because uh, less, less than one minute later, Ward low blows Kovalev so blatantly 
that Bird again has to do something. And he stops it and asks Kovalev. He, he, he stops it and goes right over to Kovalev and asks him like three times, Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And Kovalev's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's just keep fighting. I don't care. You know, I'm not a crybaby. Whatever. <laughs> but, hey, you know, whatever. Uh, but, again, he did jack shit. He just watched this guy elbow Kovalev right in the fucking head. Less than a minute later... Low blowed him right in front of the ref. The ref seen both of them. Flagrant fouls right in front of him and does nothing about it. That is showing ultra disrespect to the referee, Bird. All right? And where Bird is clearly supposed to do something there. That should have been a point immediately. But that's not the worst part. That's still not the worst part. Same fucking round. All right? He, the very beginning, he elbows Kovalev in the head. A minute later, he low blows him right in the dick, hard as hell. All right, and then at the end of the round, that's when he knees Kovalev right in the face after he tackled him. Three flagrant fouls, all in the eleventh round. Just one a minute, one a minute, flagrant as you can get. No points taken, not one point taken away. And that's not like that's all he did or something. Let's not forget that he probably kidney punched him, what, 60, 70 times? Uh, clinched him well over 100. I mean, you know, uh, rabbit punched him a good 50 times. I mean, you want me to go on? I can just run the... He probably fouled him well over 200 times. Didn't get one point. Not one point taken away. And if Bird would have just took a point, Ward wouldn't have won. Ward wouldn't know one. You know? I mean, uh, Precise just did a video show, and um, uh, Andre Ward, in about a, f a span of five seconds, with Bird staring right at it, right at it, he low blow, he punched Kovalev in the dick five or six times in a matter of about four to six seconds. Just whack, 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 right in the dick. And Bird does nothing does nothing I mean come on like but yeah there's no American bias or anything like, you know what I mean come the fuck on man like they didn't want Ward to win that fight it's, it's a joke like it really irritates me now when I think of people saying they didn't want Ward to win that fight oh yeah they did cause they could have easily made sure he didn't by just making him follow the rules they didn't even have to take points, just enforce them so he stops, and then he would have gotten knocked the fuck out. It's that simple. Because if he can't be an octopus, he can't box. He admitted, I, ca I can't box Kovalev. He cannot box me. I'm not as good of a boxer as him. So, yeah, I got to get inside and just foul the shit out of this guy, and hopefully the judges call those... Uh, a scoring criteria, you know, a total joke. So yeah, babe, your guy did every foul that I've ever accused him of doing to Kovalev, plus need him in the face, which he's never done that to anybody but Kovalev. <sighs> yeah, uh, maybe you need to watch it again, because I sure did. I didn't remember exactly how bad it was. I remembered all the kidney punches, but I didn't remember the, the six dick shots in a row. I don't remember all the elbows to the face, because uh, he elbowed him three times to the head. Um, not in that 11th round, but through the fight, there was three elbows that I caught watching in real time. I mean, but the 11th one was just disgusting. The whole damn crowd erupted. Even Bird had to do something. I mean... When you show that much disrespect to the ref and he doesn't do anything, he's on the take. Don't dare tell me he's not. Because you're literally saying, fuck you, Bird. You ain't going to do shit to me. Fuck you. So Bird clearly was on the take. Clearly. And, and we can just, again, like I said, look at the fight previous with Darlies Perez and Maurice Hooker. That was even a bigger robbery. The two biggest robberies of the year were on the same card, and the 
Rock Nation fighters were the beneficiaries of the two biggest robberies of the fucking year. So, yeah, it's, it, was, it wasn't just... That's just how the cookie crumbles. Judges score differently and all that dumb shit you hear people say. No, it was a, it was fucking corruption. I mean, give me a break. You know, wait, wait till I get to the wait, wait. In case you guys didn't hear uh, the the one interview that Kathy and uh, Kovalev were having with some people, wait till I talk about that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Um. Uh, also, it was. Wait, what round did, um, the first round that I had for Ward 7? After round 7, uh, Virgil Hunter said, you need every single round from here on out to win. Now, you could say that's just him given motivation. That way, you know, he d he does his best. He doesn't lose any more rounds because, you know, he, he was losing. But, you know, or is he telling him the truth? And what does a good trainer do? And I'm not saying Virgil's a good trainer, so I don't think he is. But what does a good trainer do? He tells his fighter the truth, even if it's the, the fighter might not want to hear it. You don't lie to your fucking fighter. You don't tell your fighter you need every single round if you don't. Because now he's going to go out and try extra hard. What if he runs into a damn punch and cut, you just cost your guy the fight? So, you know, and anyone who's ever trained or, you know, boxed or had a, a knowledgeable trainer knows that's the, the facts. So, no, he was telling them the truth. You need every round or you're going to lose. But he didn't win every round. <laughs> and even if he won every round, he still lost. Because that's only 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And he was already down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or six, and then plus a knockdown. See the difference? He, he Ward was losing no matter what. So he's saying, yeah, you need every single round or you ain't winning. And he told him that right after the seventh. Go listen. You know, it's right on the HBO. Uh, just type in Kovalev Ward full fight. It's the HBO uh, one. You'll hear him say it. That ain't motivation. That's him telling the truth. You know, I mean, when you're down seven points with five rounds left, yeah, it's the truth. And like I said, you don't lie to your fighter because you might cost them the fight. If you lie to him, you're telling him go balls out, and then he runs into a punch, and he maybe he was up on up on cards or didn't need every round, and could have you know maybe just needed all but two or something you don't say that shit you tell them exactly what it is but we all know that we all know that's the truth you tell your fighter the the truth and virgil told uh andre ward the truth he needed every round to win and that still wasn't going to be enough all right but he needed every round to have even a chance you know but Hey, it is what it is, right? I mean, and then people talking about, you know, uh, I just had someone in the comments saying, wait till Saturday when Ward uh, outboxes this shit out of Kovalev. I'm like, dude, that's funny because Ward himself admitted he can't outbox Kovalev. So how's he going to outbox him, huh? He admitted he can't. So, hmm, you know, but whatever. You know, um, and... Beep, you, you you were telling me that uh, Ward wasn't able to run in the first fight like he usually does. Dude, the hell he wasn't. The hell he wasn't. I mean, all he did was fucking run the 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 entire fight unless he was clinching. I mean, it's all like it was run 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 from round one to five. He just ran the whole time. Uh, it got to the one point, I think it was after round six, they asked Letterman who he thought was winning, and he was like, clearly Kovalev. He said, all Ward is doing is just running. And he goes, he goes, if I was Ward, I'd take it to Kovalev and beat him up. And Roy made fun of him, like, yeah, like, it's just so easy to take it to Kovalev and beat him up. But, yeah, I mean, it was obvious as hell. The dude was running a fucking marathon. Of course he could run. He was running damn good, too, fast as shit. You know, so please, he, he could run just fine. I don't I need to have no damn knee injury. My ass.
please. Running like that and that fast and juking and all that, he would have blew his fucking ACL out if he had any injury. And, uh, another, like, I hate how Ward does this and the commentators don't tell the truth about it. <clears throat> when Ward holds, we all know this is the truth. When Ward holds, he purposely puts his arm under your arm to make it look like you're holding him. And he's been doing this his whole career. Some, like, Bernstein has called him out on it before. I've seen uh, Al Gray called him out on it before. Um, or, or Farhood, I mean, called him out on it before when he was fighting on Showtime. Everyone knows he does this. This That's his trick to make it look like he isn't holding. He puts his arm under yours and grabs you around the back. That's clinching. Okay, sometimes he'll also grab your arm too. But a lot of the times he'll put his arm purposely under your arm and around your back to make it look like he isn't holding when he is holding. You know, and the commentators didn't call him out once on HBO. You know, Max even kept accusing Kovalev of holding when what Ward's his favorite fighter and he doesn't know that he does that? Come on. I mean, Max just needs fired. We all know he only got that job because of his fucking daddy. You know, his daddy got him the job at ESP. His daddy tried to make him a fucking beastie boy, first of all. And he was tr so trash as a fucking rapper that he said, uh, let, let me get you a gig at ESPN. Because his dad's in the entertainment industry, you know. Fucking, you know, big, powerful Jew in the, mute, in the entertainment industry. So he got him a job at ESPN. Then he got him a job at HBO. The guy's never accomplished shit in his life if it wasn't, except for, you know, He's never accomplished shit in his life on his own. Everything has been handed to him by his daddy. You know? So it's like, uh, the guy is as biased as it gets. If he had to, if he had to get a job on HBO with his own merits, fuck no, you'd never know who this guy was. You would not know the name Max Kellerman. He is as biased as they come. As biased as they come. Literally, I mean, I've given you a million examples in videos before. I'm not even getting into it again, but the guy's extremely biased. But HBO can't fire him because his, his, his dad has too many friends at HBO, you know, and ESPN. So he's so tied into the whole sports, you know, media now that it is what it is. Maybe when his dad dies or something, they'll can his ass. But for now, no, you know, because people need to call his dad for favors, and if they can his son, he's not going to give him a favor, is he? So HBO has to put up with having the most biased boxing commentator in all of uh, in all of uh, 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 televised boxing outside of Mauro Ronaldo, uh, who is just but he ain't even a boxing commentator. He's a fucking WWE commentator. And why did they bring a WWE commentator onto the PBC team? That makes no sense to me. The guy literally called Marvin Hagler, Marvin Hagler. I mean, like, you clearly should not be talking boxing at all. Like, go talk fucking Brock Lesnar or whatever some wrestler's name is. Gold Duster, uh, Undertaker or some shit. You know, not Marvin Hagler. I don't want to hear you talk about boxing. I hate Mauro Ronaldo. But, hey, at least he has an, a reason for being such a dumbass. Max does not. You know, that's his, been his full-time gig since he was like 19 years old, for crying out loud. And he's like 40 now. So, come on, you know. But, um, when he, he, he puts his arm under yours, you know, and around your back to make it appear that his opponent is holding him. And the idiot commentators know that Ward is doing that. And... <laughs> all they know he's doing it all the time but HBO specifically I've heard Showtime call him out for it but I have never heard HBO uh, call him out for it ever ever I, but I have heard them watch him do it and then blame his opponent in every one of his HBO fights they did it to Sullivan Barrera they did it to Kovalev I don't remember if they did it to Brand, actually. and they, I don't think they would have needed to do it to Paul Smith because he did just box his ears off because Paul Smith crying out loud. But, you know, every fight you're ever going to see from uh, Andre Ward 
they're never going to admit that that's what he's doing, even though they know. So, yeah, they want Andre Ward to win. They don't dare say they don't want him to win. It's clear as day. They wouldn't try to brainwash you into making you think he's winning if they didn't want him to win. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't dare talk to me like I'm an idiot, people, and they be like, no, they want Kovalev. They want Kovalev to win. I would think they would want Kovalev to win, but because many reasons. You know, the guy will travel. He's much, much less demanding. He's not a diva. He'll fight anybody. He'll take low money. You know, he'll do what a fighter's supposed to do. Ward is the complete opposite. But Andre Ward is American. It's that simple, man. Like, I don't know why people can't wrap their head around this. There is American bias, factually. It's not even a fucking debate. You know what I mean? It's not a debate. Anytime some nation take comes in and starts kicking ass of a you know long time American sport, that them nations always catch shit and have a bias against them. Always, you know. Like Maxwell Bear is a big baseball guy. You guys know that. He he you know used the example of the what the what's going on with the Dominican Republic right now and how they're you know just destroying shit. And, you know, going to have many guys coming into the bigs. And uh, they're all being accused of being roid freaks and, you know, just getting just like the Eastern Europeans. All the same shit that's happening to the Eastern European boxers is happening to the Dominican Republic baseball players. Why? Because they don't want them fucking coming in and taking the stardom that they think, you know, these uh, American good old boys should have. Well, if you're not the best, you're not the best. It's that simple. You know, just because you're American don't mean you're fucking entitled. You know, please, if someone's better than you, I don't give a shit where they come from. I mean, I don't care if they just crawled out from under a rock. If they can beat the champ, they're the best. And they deserve more respect than the last champ because he just kicked his ass. You know? But Cove molly whopped Ward. molly whopped him. And they would totally, they, they just it acted like Ward was kicking his ass. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I forgot how bad it really was. You know, like, totally forgot how bad it really was. It was sickening. I turned the volume, like, to, to where I could barely hear it. Just because I like hearing punches, but I did not want to hear the stupid fucking voices. So I turned it to where I could just, couldn't really make out what they were saying eventually. and But I could still, like, hear a little bit of the, the punches even though they were quieter. I mean, Ward had Z... Not, uh, I'll, get, I'll get to that, actually. Uh, I want to talk about um, that, that, that press conference, you know, the, the final press conference. Uh, Prince calling Team Kovalev in main, ev main events, saying that they, they, like, they're playing the victims. Oh, my God. Like, talk about projection. Uh, isn't his main star, Ward, the biggest fucking wannabe victim ever? Isn't he the same gr <laughs> Did Ward not cry on video camera? It's on YouTube. You can go watch him crying tears <clears throat> when he found out he had to fight Kovalev. Was he not crying that he had to fight Kovalev and playing the victim? Saying I'm being mistreated and they would never do this to someone else. It's because I'm black. And I'm playing every victim card you could possibly think of. Oh, but it's Cove. The, Cove's the one playing the victim, huh? No, it's fucking Prince's Starfighter. And and that's not the only time he's uh, Ward's played the victim. Ward plays the victim nonstop. What's he... I don't get the respect I deserve. Why uh, Why do you think that is, Ward? Why do you think that is? Because you can't box within the rules? Huh? You may you, you think that? Maybe because you got your ass whooped by Kovalev and stole his belts and bragged like you fucking knocked him out or something? Uh, you think maybe that's why you don't get the respect you deserve? And ain't it funny that before that fight he even said, I guarantee you after this fight I don't get the respect I deserve? Like he already knew that, yeah, all I got to do is survive 
and I'm probably going to get my ass whooped on, like, the cards, but I'm going to win, and people are going to bitch at me and be pissed at me. So he was already setting the groundwork. Again, victim before the fight, victim after the fight, victim when he found out he had to fight Kovalev, but yeah, Kov's the victim. Show me one clip of Kov playing the victim. Even when he got robbed, he handled it like a fucking man. All he said was, I just want my rematch. How's that a victim? Was he crying and crying? I got robbed. <laughs> no, no, no. Let Ward get robbed. Please, let him get robbed. Watch how he cries for six months straight. You know, and there's no rematch clause for this one. So I actually would like him to win and then get robbed. That way, there's no rematch clause. Fuck you. You know, fuck you. I wouldn't even want Cove to give him a rematch. I'd just let him sit there and stew and suffer and knowing that, yeah, you won, but you lost. Let him know how Cove felt. Or feels. Actually, I don't want that at all. I just want Cove to love to murder him. Literally murder him. You know, not just whoop his ass. Like, put his brain to sleep. Like he did Simakov. Yeah, the deep sleep like he did Simakov. I'd be so happy. Just get that guy out of this sport, man. He's a fucking disgrace. You know, well, there's no point. I don't have been no enjoyment watching him. I have enjoyment watching him get his ass beat, but I have no enjoyment watching him fight. I mean, if I want to watch just someone foul fest, I'll go watch a fucking old Frizzy Zivic fight or a Salido fight or, you know, some bullshit like that. You know, what's the point of watching Ward? You know, there's no fucking amazing talent there. Give me a break, you know. It's disgusting. The calling t main events in uh, uh, Kovalev playing, saying they're playing the victim card. I mean, we know who plays the victim card out of that fucking the whole group of people. And it's surely Team Ward. I mean, Virgil. Virgil always plays the victim. So all they know how to do is play the victim. Give me a break. Look at what the, 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 the whole Triple G thing with Ward. Victim, victim, victim. He was the victim all the time. I'm American. Why don't they support me? Why do they support this, this foreigner over me? Oh, I don't know, because he's fucking constantly in the ring. He's knocking people out. He's fighting within the rules. He's whooping better competition than you. He don't fucking cheat, and he's exciting. He's humble. He don't lie every fucking third sentence. Oh, just maybe? Just maybe that's why? I can go on and on on that, too, you know? He plays the victim constantly. Even James Prince was playing the victim. By accusing someone else of playing the victim, you're playing the victim. It's, it's like, oh my god, man. It's ridiculous. Oh, then, uh, the, uh, Verge playing the victim again. He said, uh, he goes, you know, he's saying that not enough people are talking about this fight. And I suspect it's because of Ward and how he stands up for himself. No, I think it's because... People don't give a fuck about this fight because we already know who won. We already know who won. Okay? And no one cares about Ward. No one likes Ward. So no one's going to talk about him. No one gives a shit about him. Why do you think, like Beef said, all the polls want, want him, want everyone, the Americans, want to see him. Everyone wants to see him get his fucking block knocked off. Why? Oh, don't. I wonder. I wonder why. Because he's an arrogant asshole. He says he's a Christian when he constantly lies. I mean, just, Kant is not humble. He's, he's the complete opposite of a Christian. You know what I mean? He runs with a fucking notorious, accused gangster, murderer, drug smuggler. I mean, the, the dude has poisoned his whole entire community. You know what I mean? Like, half of Houston is hooked on fucking dope because of the man. You know what I mean? Lives he's ruined, and this is the guy that, that Ward wants to run with? Yeah, he's a real Christian man, huh? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, come on. The guy's been investigated for several murders. This is Ward's manager, though. They're such a Christian. You know, the guy, we know what he did to, to, to the Guzans to get Ward out. Extorted them, allegedly, but... You know, they said it on the record, so fuck it. It ain't allegedly. For 30-some grand, 36 grand. Yeah, that's how much Ward's worth. It, it's like, sign the paper or you're dead.
You know, which is probably what they did to the judges and Bird. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, ain't no fucking Christian. Oh, oh my God! When that Dubin dude, uh, uh, his awards co-manager, got up on on the podium and he was like, you know, I, I I was sitting back the other day and thinking, you know, what role do me and my brother Prince have, uh, or what do me and Prince he, Dubin got? Uh, how do you put it? He said, uh, I was sitting there the other day thinking, what role do me and Prince play? Uh, in our fighters careers that we manage and he gave some long-winded bullshit answer I can tell you exactly what the rules are to fix the fights of their fighters I mean that's the only thing they do Maurice Hooker Andre Ward the only big card that, fu that, that, that they fucking been in that they had any anything significant to do with uh, and both their guys got their ass whooped their guys didn't catch an L for it, you know? So, give me a break, you know? My ass. My ass. No. The only, the, the Kathy Duva is probably much more savvy this time. You know, when uh, Cotto fought Canelo, De La Hoya was way too savvy to allow James Prince to come in and fuck with that card, you know, which he easily could have, but, you know, De La Hoya probably already knew all about him. I think Kathy was just too nice. I'm sure she's totally on it now and took care of any of that mess. You know, took care of any of it. Whether she had to pay people off too, just to either keep it even or give rounds to, to Ward or, or to Kovalev, I mean, because James Prince is certainly going to go do it if she doesn't. You know, so in all honesty, she better have. Uh, it's the truth. You know, I mean, and. and History does say that any time a, 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 a fight uh, ends with a bullshit decision like that and they rematch, it never happens twice. But there's always a first for everything. I don't think it will happen, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did at all. But I don't think it will uh, because, like, I agree with Biebs on this when we were talking. There's, there's too many eyes on this. Them judges do not want to catch the heat that the last one did. Uh, who's the ref? Jane Nady, I believe. Um, he don't want to catch the heat that Bird is catching, you know, and caught. So, you know, uh, they're, they're not going to put themselves in that position. Uh, no, you know, Ward is going to have to actually earn this one if he wants it. You know, they might give them, you know, a, a, close, a close rounds. Like if the rounds are pretty hard to, to decide who won it, they might give all of those rounds to Ward. That might be the, the closest thing they'll do or something. Uh, who knows, though, you know, because since there is no rematch clause, if they do it for Kovalev, we know Kov ain't rematching them because that would be two wins for Kovalev. So why? It'd be like the Bradley rubber match. No one wanted to see Manny and Bradley the, the, the rubber match because we already knew Pacquiao whooped him twice. Just because he got robbed once... To, did we really be like, well, we need a rubber match to to see who's truly the best? No, we knew Manny was the best. He just got robbed. So it's like, no, no, we don't need to see a rubber match if Cove wins. If Ward wins, we do need to see a rubber match because then it would actually be 1-1. One, one, you know, but if Cove wins, he ain't giving Ward a rubber match. He's going to fucking laugh and rub it right in Ward's face for months, months. You know, like he does, like he used to do with a duck and chicken shit. He's gonna be doing that with Andre Ward constantly. Ward's gonna have to earn a Mando, and he's gonna get knocked the fuck out long before he, you know, gets back to a spot. You think he's gonna beat Bivol and Beater Beef and Fosdick and all these guys? Please, these guys are gonna fucking annihilate him. If not, not every one of them, but one of them certainly will. I think Beater Beef is gonna. Will murder him. I think that's a worse stylistic matchup than Kovalev is for uh, uh, Ward because he is the epitome of an inside fighter, you know, and he's strong as an ox. So he would just wear Ward out, and just he has such short arms that he can, you know, he has like short arms like Tyson, where he can be, you know, freaking this close to you and still just short left hook knock you out 
So, yeah. I mean, please. And Beater Beef is about to be the Mando to the winner of this. Bibble's about to be the WBA Mando to this. I mean, uh, whoever the winner is has a lot of tough fights coming up. Vosdick's going to end up being a damn Mando. I mean, yeah. Uh, no. Um, even if Kovalev does get fucked over, he'll get all those belts back. I mean, that's for certain because someone's going to be Ward and they will fight Kovalev and not rob him. Because the Eastern Europeans actually have a thing called an honor, you know? I mean, go watch any of the cards that are over in Eastern Europe. You know, like Russia, Lithuania, Hungary, uh, Kazakhstan, um, you know, Bulgaria. They don't play with that shit. They don't rob their fucking... They don't rob guys. They don't, uh, uh, you know, if their guy loses, even if it's super close and, you know... Or if it's a draw, you know, say it's a draw, their guy gets a draw. They're not going to give him the win. They're like, no, you you didn't win. They don't play that shit. They don't do it. It's not in their, it's just not the way they are. Like, they're totally different, like, than we are in that respect. It's not hard. It's just, it's an honor and dignity thing. You know, they don't, they don't like a guy who uh, is going to, you know, run around saying he's the winner when you didn't win. They don't respect that at all, you know. Um, like, look at uh, Pavekin and Tukalm. You know, that had open scoring. Um, and that them them cards, every time that them cards were dead on. And they could easily uh, had Pavekin up uh, several rounds because some of the rounds were so damn closer. Tukalm just nipped around. But they'd give it to Tacom every time if he just nicked it. They didn't have to. You could have easily made an argument that fucking Pavekin won a lot of them rounds. But they won't do it. They don't. Like I've said numerous times, do your research. Out of the last four years, the, the e Eastern Europe has the best track record. They don't rob people over there at all. You know, like... At, Virtually at all, and, uh, occasionally some, you know, and I'm not saying they don't rob them on purpose anyway. You know, the judge might do some dumb shit, you know, where he just don't know how to score a fight or whatever. But no, they don't. They don't play that shit over there. Period. Um, what else I want to talk about? Um, mm, yeah, I, I just do been in. Uh, Dubin and Prince's job is just to, to, to protect their fighters by fixing the fights. And to say otherwise, like, you're an asshole. Just, like, I just look at Darley Perez. Darley Perez versus fucking Hooker. I mean, that set the stage right there. You knew that they have no problem fixing a fight. You can't lose every single round of a fight and win. That fight was, that fit, that, that decision was way worse than the Kovalev Ward one. You know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, so, they have no problem doing whatever they gotta do to fix fights. And that's why, uh, Rock Nation Sports needs to get the fuck out of the game. And James Prince, some DEA agent, needs to put a case on his ass. Um, get him the fuck out of boxing or let some other thug put a fucking bullet in his brain pan. I don't care. You know? Hey, you know. I love the the music he produces, but for the sport I love, he's terrible. So I can I have old music that he produced. I don't need new music he produced. You know, plus I don't even fuck with Scarface no more, and Scarface is the only rapper I like that he produced. So uh, yeah, I already got my Scarface collection. So fuck fuck James friends. And uh, oh, about the. Uh, Virgil and JD, uh, uh, JDJ, you know, saying, you know, Virgil tried to, to, to get JDJ to leave uh, Kovalev and come over and help uh, Ward. That fucking lets you know how uh, scared Team Ward is. That they are li literally breaking, like, the one rule you do not break. You don't s s try stealing another guy's trainer a fucking week out from the fight. You know what I mean? And paying them a bunch of money. And, and uh, Prince and Dubin are the ones who offered them all this money to, to leave, to say, fuck you, I'm not training you, uh, Kovalev. And, well, you know, or, and 
tell J and have JDJ give them all the, the the secrets and his game plan and all that. And JDJ said, "Fuck you." And to 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 say that JDJ is lying, you're an idiot because go to YouTube and type in Virgil says he will show 100% proof at final press conference that JDJ is lying. Did he show the proof? Did he? It was the final press conference. No. Virgil said he would prove at this final press conference that they didn't call JDJ and the JDJ called them. All right. And then when he get uh, then when he the press conference comes up, he gets up on the podium and fucking lies as usual. I mean, because you know sexual predators have no problem lying, so you know he does lie. And says that he never said that. He never said he was gonna prove it. And he, uh, he, what he say? Uh, that he believes if it's not gonna help, um, and it's gonna hinder, then don't do it. What? You just two days ago you said you were gonna prove to all the boxing fans that John David Jackson called you guys and offered to sell you. Uh, Kovalev's game plan and, you know, le not train him for the fight. And then Prince admitted that he made him a huge money offer. So if he called you and wanted to leave, why the fuck didn't, isn't he gone then, huh? Because you sure James Prince offered him a bunch of money, but he didn't leave, did he? So obviously he didn't fucking call them, you know. And he said, I got it on my phone right here. You didn't say one of them say... Well, look at this. Look, 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 look. It's just like with the Triple G emails. You know? They've done this before. This isn't the first time. They constantly lie. You know, this is Ward's whole MO. That's what I'm saying. This guy is so such a fake Christian. It's disgusting, man. You know, like... And it shows you how scared Team Ward is. They're that fucking desperate. That desperate. I've never heard of a, a a camp ever doing that in the history of boxing. Ever. To call a trainer a week before a fight and offer them a bunch of money and say, please walk out of the camp right now and come to our camp and we'll pay you a bunch of money, tell us what his game plan is, all secrets, everything, and we'll pay you all this money. That means they're not very confident in winning. That's clearly what that says. That's not me reading into it. That's exactly what it is. That's the only reason you would fucking dare make that offer. Only reason you would dare make that offer. And that also shows that they're willing to do anything to win, which would include taking fucking steroids. And that's why he got acne all over his body. And I don't want to hear that stupid sweat pimple shit that even made Beebs laugh. You know, uh, sweat pimples are like, that big, not the size of fucking dimes all over you, your neck, your shoulder, your chest, your abdomen, your whole back is covered in dime sized fucking big giant boils. That's not fucking sweat pimples, please. <laughs> it's fucking steroids. I mean, give me a break. It's testosterone. I mean, give me a break, you know? And, uh, 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 Virgil is just mad that the cat's out of the bag about how scared they are and how they were willing to stoop so low as to call John David Jackson and try to get them to get him to leave Kovalev and it didn't work but it shows they're fucking scared scared why else would they try it? if they're so confident like they want you to believe why the fuck would they do that why would they be the first guys ever to try to do that, huh? Why? Why, Ward fans? Why? Because they're fucking shitting bricks, that's why. They know they got their ass whooped last time. And more than likely, that shows you that they're not able to pay these fucking judges off or something's going on to where it's not working out like they, the first one worked out. Because they wouldn't have called JDJ if they, could have, if they had the judges paid off. So the judges probably aren't paid off. I mean, we won't know until the decision's rendered or you know, if it goes to the cards. I don't think it will, honestly. But if it does, we'll find out then. But 
it would make me believe that they're they don't have a um you know a a security blanket already in place for them to go that route means they're like fuck we actually have to win this we gotta fuck his camp up bad bad because we know our guy can't beat him we know our guy can't beat him so what are we gonna do here guys and why the fuck would john david jackson leave kovalev a guy that he has full confidence is going to kick the shit out of Ward. He just watched him do it, all right? He just watched him do it, so he knows he can beat him, and he helped him make even he helped him make adjustments to where he probably believes he's going to beat his ass even worse this time, and have now Kovalev's going to have all three belts back, and not he's not going to be able to train the light heavyweight king of the world ever again. Why would he do that? To go get one one lump sum of money to play second fiddle to John David Jackson for a week. Why the fuck would John David Jackson ever make that call and ask for that favor like Virgil wants you to believe? Yeah, uh, I, I really think my guy's going to beat the shit out of yours, but I want to come and work with you for one week. And then your guys, you know, not going to have any belts. Or e even if I can help you win all the belts, I'm not going to be the trainer of Ward. So what? what's my job going to be? Or I can help my guy beat your guy's ass again and be the trainer of the light heavyweight king again and go on another long tear. <laughs> I mean, how dumb is Team Ward? You know, how dumb are they? I mean, I guess when you got a sex offender, uh, a, a, a child of a crackhead mother, and a, a junkie father, and a, a, a drug-running manager, you're probably not the uh, brightest bunch in the fucking uh, batch, you know what I mean? Um, it is what it is, you know? So, yeah, I mean, Ward's being misguided by some purebred idiots. Fucking idiots, you know what I mean? Oh my god. Honest to god here, this is a serious, serious question. With how, like, close, uh, Virgil and, uh, Ward are, and that could be just father-son thing since he did take him in, you know what I mean? And, uh, but with how we know what, what Virgil did to Keisha Cole's mother, um, and I'm not going to say allegedly because Keisha Cole said it, that he raped her mother uh, so she, and said, you know, if you don't let me screw you, I'm going to put you in prison. Uh, and that's how Keisha Cole was conceived. She was She's a product of rape. Virgil, you know, is the father of, he was the one who raped her mother. And Keaton, now we were, you know, gifted with one of the greatest singers ever. But I love Keisha, but, you know, still fucked up what her mother had to go through. Honest to God, and I'm not trying to be a dick to Ward here or anything, because I'm really, cu like, uh, not curious, but I wonder, you know, because Virgil is a sexual predator. Do you think he took those boys in, and uh, what do sexual predators do? They go where kids are. He never laced a pair of gloves up in his life. He knew nothing about boxing, and then all of a sudden he opens a boxing gym, takes little boys into his house. I mean, you know, come on, man. That's red flags everywhere everywhere i mean that's like the quintessential fucking child molester that's exactly what they all do you know what i mean you know then don't, don't act like it ain't either we all know they all put themselves around kids you know and you could be like well he did rape a woman oh he's that's just opportunity also. Who says he didn't do it to guys, too? You know, who says he didn't do it to teenage boys who were on, you know, on parole? You know, a 19-year-old boy who was broke, you know, violated his parole and was going to go to prison for a few years. You, you don't know. He couldn't impregnate them, so we don't, we might probably never heard them story. Plus, guys never report uh, being raped from, you know, what statistics say anyway. You know, in prisons now, on every single payphone, it says, if you've been raped, now this number. Uh, like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, it's so funny. 
Uh, I've never heard of anyone ever leaving the block because they called that number. You know what I mean? Um, but I did know these two dudes who used to... Uh, this is off, off topic, but these two fucking guys who oh, were, were homo thugs. You know, they were all wanted to be gangsters, but they'd always have Bible study, and they'd go into their cell, or into the, the one of their cells, and they'd put the little towel up like they are taking a shit, you know, and uh, just stay in there forever, and uh, come out and say they had Bible study, but they wouldn't look at each other for fucking days. If they were, like, reading the Bible, wouldn't they, like, be friendly, but they wouldn't talk to each other for days until all of a sudden they really wanted that Bible, really wanted that Bible study again. It was the funniest shit, the funniest shit. And they used to try to act so fucking tough, so tough until everyone would just fucking humiliate them, you know. And then they would shut the fuck up. Uh, but they had a problem with still constantly running their mouth, and then people would, you know, call them out on being homos, and then they. Shut up, and then, like, two days later, they start acting tough again, and it just was a never-ending cycle. But it was so funny. <laughs> it was just a funny story. Uh, Bible study. Like, sure, that's what you're really doing in there. Why you gotta close the door and put the towel up for Bible study? You can have Bible study in the rec room, dude. <laughs> it was just funny. Oh, and, uh, th this is something that, you know, um, me and Beebs were talking the other day. We might be doing a, a, a second um, debate because, uh, you know, I didn't get to talk much. Um, he was, and I, I, it's not his fault. It, it was late at night, um, and he was very long-winded, honestly. So, you know, uh, I, I, but we talked about it. He apologized. He's, like I said, dude's a really nice guy. Um, I have nothing against Beeb, uh, but we might be doing a part two on that anyway to where we can like keep our shit concise and stuff like that um not you know ramble and whatnot uh but one of the things he said in there when i asked him about what does he think about andre roids or andre roids andre andre ward's uh roid use or suppo suspected roid use with all his acne and all that shit everywhere and now all of a sudden he's fucking the biggest he's ever been with acne everywhere, you know, and not sweat pimple acne, like fucking boils everywhere that he never had before. So if it was sweat pimples, wouldn't he have had it before? Because he's been sweaty his whole fucking boxing career. Uh, yeah, he would have. But no, all of a sudden, when he's fighting a guy who just beat the fuck out of him, he bulks up the biggest he's ever been and has boils everywhere. Okay. It's not rocket science here, okay? And Beeb was like, well, I'm not a snitch. Beeb, do you know what a snitch is, Beeb? Beeb, a snitch is what your buddy Ness was, okay? When he fucking was selling weed with the, them people, and uh, he got caught and ratted all them out so he didn't have to do time. When you snitch on your code eated so you don't have to go to prison, that's a snitch, Beeb. Not saying, I think this guy is doing steroids. That's not a snitch, okay? That's just giving your opinion on an athlete. I mean, my God, like, uh, that's not a snitch. The, the, the snitching on your Cody's is so to, to lower your sentence. That is a snitch, all right? Uh, that that's a snitch, uh, and you're a civilian, Beeb, so you can't even be a snitch. You're a civilian. You're supposed to call the police, because are you gonna go handle it in with street justice? Anything ever in sh with street justice? Of course not. You're a grown man, and you you live by the law. I'm sure, you know, like you're supposed to. You know, so you you can't be a snitch. You're a damn civilian. If someone breaks in your house, you know, you're probably gonna call the police. You know. If, you know, whatever, you know, you're, you're not being a snitch by saying you think words on Roy's, right? and neither am I. I was begged to snitch, but I did my time like a man, unlike your fucking old uh, podcast host. <clears throat> but you said <clears throat> that, um... And because you were talking so long, like, I kept losing my train of thought, and I was getting real tired. If you even watch it, you can just see my face, I'm like this. The whole time, like, I'm fucking out of it. Uh, just, but it was late, you know, so it's not like you're, I'm not 100% not your fault, because it was fucking like 2.30 in the morning or whatever, but, um, eventually I would just, like, lose my train of thought. But one thing you said was, 
these fighters, you know, do I really think these fighters are taking, you know, testosterone uh, because it would be counterproductive because they got to make weight, right? Well, Mickey Bay was 32 to 1. His TEA ra TE ratio was 32 to 1. All right, so yeah, he took massive amounts of fucking testosterone and made weight just fine. <laughs> made weight just fine. Lance Armstrong took massive amounts of testosterone, many different kinds of tests, and, it, and admitted to it. And he was fucking toothpick thin. All right, so you don't you can take tests and you know use other substances to counteract the the bulking up of it, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, you can take a shit ton of tests and still not turn into Mark Coleman or whatever, you know, or whoever that bodybuilder dude uh, name you said. <coughs> um, and um, you also said like the. And I, I brought up the Mike Tyson line, you know, steroids do not uh, teach you how to fight, and they definitely do not. Um, but with these two guys, you said this, and I agree, and I still agree. Uh, when you have two guys who are, you know, uh, high-level athletes, and one's clean, and one's using a fucking PEDs, yeah, he has a huge advantage. And Kovalev ain't on PEDs. This dude's been doing VADA 365 24-7 since the CBP's inception. Ward has not. Ward has only been doing uh, VADA for the, uh, for, um, when, on June 17th, it will have been 90 days that he had been enrolled in VADA, but he's only been tested five times. Five times. And with the amount of money behind him, you and I both know he can destroy any test. He can beat any test. His piss can be so hot that the cup should just melt instantly, but it's not going to. He's going to pass with flying fucking colors. I mean, look at him, dude. You know he's on juice. You know for a fact whether you want to admit it or not, but he's not going to come up positive. He's not because he just, you know, got, got too much money and too many connections. He got doctors that are going to make sure that it's all masked. You know, we know this, you know, please. So him using steroids, so much steroids, that he's the biggest he's ever been, he's the most ripped he's ever been, and he got fucking boils the size of dimes and quarters all over his body, he's juiced to the fucking gills. So yeah, it's going to give him a, a, a huge advantage. I don't know if it's enough to actually help him beat Kovalev or not. I, I really don't, but... It might be. And you said, uh, now, if, if he beat Kovalev, would I say that it's uh, because of the roids? Um, and I said, I don't know. You know, and I, I, you know, I don't. I'd have to see the fight. You know, it all depends on the fight. However, um, that is a huge part of his game plan, which I will get to uh, shortly on what his game plan is. And I guarantee you I already know what his game plan is. And I pretty much know what Kovalev's is too because John David Jackson has said it so many times. <laughs> Plus we all know what Kov's game plan is. It's virtually the same for every fight. Um, but uh, I wonder if Ward is going to get a chemical peel before uh, Saturday night or is he going to actually enter the ring with all that them fucking boils all over him because I remember uh, my buddy had fucking acne all over his face, like bad, like acne upon acne upon acne, like just layers on top of each other, and we were wrestling, I grabbed his face like here, I almost fucking threw up, like nothing against people with acne, but I never felt that before, and like, oh, it was just disgusting, disgusting, I literally went, ah, and jumped off of him. I couldn't imagine being uh, Kovalev and like having to have all those boils rubbing all up against you. And what if it one fucking you rub on it and it bursts right on you? Because there's not a little pus in them. Them fuckers will be like <laughs> splatter all over you. What if it lit them all up on the face or something? I'd puke. I'd puke everywhere. You know what I mean? You know, I, I hope he gets a goddamn chemical peel because that's just totally unfair to Kovalev. Honestly, I mean or. Maybe it would help Kovalev because he'd be like, "Get the fuck away from me!" and keep jabbing him, <laughs> keeping him away from him. But uh, uh, that Yormak dude, that Rock Nation dude, that uh, kept talking all that shit. Oh my god, I want to call him a really 
really nasty, nasty name. And I think a lot of you know what I want to call him, but uh, I'm not going to because I don't want to strike on my fucking channel up for that piece of shit. And I don't even know if they'll give me a strike if I said it because they literally might shut me down because of, you know, Google, what, what they really represent. Um, my God, is that guy a scumbag, man. A total scumbag. I mean... <laughs> Warren said at that press conference, we stay humble. We stay humble. After all this shit they've been talking to for th this whole entire lead up to this fight, he calls that humble? Are you kidding me? And then he said, uh, all I want to do uh, on Saturday is glorify God with my performance. What the fuck? So, uh, uh, Ward, just first of all, God don't like ugly, okay? God does not like ugly. You had to have heard that if you've ever even read a Bible, which I highly doubt you have. You know, I really don't think you have. Um, and headbutts, uh, elbows, uh, low blows, um, kidney shots, uh, clinching, um, knees to the face, uh, rabbit punching, uh, rabbit punching, uh, hip and thigh punching, um, oh, hitting and holding, uh, those are all ugly. That's all ugly, Ward. That, that's nine fucking fouls. He did all of those versus Kovalev in the first fight. All of them. Every single one of them. And many, many times, each one of them. More than once, every one of them. Some of them 30 times. Some of them, like, 80 times if you kind of want to, the, the holding and hitting and the clinching and all that. You know, the elbows he did a few times. The kidney shots were out of control. Uh, out of control, you know. Um, <laughs> Ward did every single one of those fouls versus Kovalev in the first fight. And bitch-ass bird took not one single point. That's nine different... I think I just kind of... I think it was... I had this many fingers already. I think I had nine. That's nine different types of fouls that he did each one multiple times and he didn't even lose one point. Not one. That's insane. That is insane. I mean... To those who fucking say there's no American bias against Eastern European European boxers, just just think it is. Do you even think, even think for one second that a point would have been taken from Kovalev if he did all the exact same shit Ward did and Ward did all the same shit Kovalev did? Do you think there would have been a point taken? Do you? From Kov if he did all that. Do you? The answer is fuck no. He would have been disqualified. There would have been no point taken. It would have been DQ'd instantly. You're out of here. As soon as that knee to the face happened, you're gone. You are gone. Kovalev, like, he didn't, he thought he was going to, he thought he had the fight in the bag. But as soon as he took that knee to the face, he should have pulled a Darrell and just fell and faked it like Darrell's bitch ass did. It would have been such pussy to do, but it would have... The, knowing he didn't know they were going to fuck him, but if somehow he could have known what they were going to do, yeah, I, I would have said it's justifiable. Because they were... What they did was even worse than what Darrell did, honestly. like You can't get your ass handed to you and then rob someone like that. It, 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 that's ridiculous. You know, plus a knee to the face is, like, serious. I mean, serious. It made his shit gush. You know, Darrell, it was, that's ten times worse than what happened to Darrell. I mean, please, Darrell actually got hit and then looked around and then went, oh! You know what I mean? We're versus Abraham. Come on. You know, Kovalev actually got kneed right in the face after being elbowed in the head, after being low-blowed multiple times. <laughs> Then need in the face, all in the same round, and Bird saw every single one of them took not one point. But no American bias or nothing. 
None at all. None. Like, fucking ridiculous. Oh my god. Just saying there is no American bias shows there's fucking American bias, and that those of you who say that are the perpetrators of the, the bias towards Americans. It's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievable to me. It's just crazy. Now, if Ward is this, uh, if, if Ward is just so great, you know, as people like to say, he's such a great boxer, pound for pound, top one, two, three fighter, which is a crock of shit. You know, the guy hasn't beaten anybody. The last time he beat anyone of note was a B-level guy, Carl Frotch, a B-level guy in, what, 2012? That's the last thing of note the guy did. Last win of note he had was in 2012. It's fucking five years ago, dude. Five fucking years ago he beat one B-level fighter. That's the best win he's ever had. But he's pound for pound. Are you kidding me? That's almost as bad as fucking Rigandau, who only beat Nonito Donaire five fucking years ago at the, the, the end of Nonito's run uh, when he was, you know, just a slugger now. He wasn't like the Donaire that was, you know, whooping Victor Chinian's ass, who was like super athletic and all up on his feet and like minor Bruce Lee-ish. You know, no, he was just a plotter just searching for a big left hook. You know, he was not the Donaire that, you know, was running through all those divisions. I mean, come on. And, Don and Rigo has done dick in five years. Hasn't even fought one guy inside of the top 50 in five years. And you guys have him on pound for pound list. Ring has him on the pound for pound list. Like, what the fuck? It makes no sense. None. I mean, it's unbelievable unbelievable and Ward's another one him and Ward should not be nowhere near a pound for pound list you gotta actually do something to get on a pound for pound list you can't beat someone five years ago and still be there uh, otherwise uh, Manny's pound for pound number one forever you know five years from now he's still pound for pound number one if that's the fucking case if that's the standard y'all want to go by man he's pound for pound number one five years from now even if he fucking retires for five years he's still pound for pound number one after he retires for five years does that make any sense of course not but somehow it applies to those guys what the fuck ever man whatever you know it's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> uh, but it, what I, what I'm saying about it, it, to the people saying we're such a great fighter, right? Uh, then why can't he beat anyone, anyone outside of like Pud Wills and Paul Smiths and shit like that, right? D level fighters. Why can't he be even a C level fighter within the rules? while boxing within the rules. If he's so great, why can't he beat a fucking C-level fighter while boxing within the rules? Riddle me that. Explain to me how he's so great if he can't even beat a C-level fighter within the rules, while boxing within the rules. And I'm not just... This isn't a fucking rhetorical question. I want an answer from one of you fucking Ward fanboys. Answer it right now. Hit pause and fucking answer and if I don't get any fucking answers, then you're all admitting he ain't fucking great. You're admitting he ain't shit, is what you're doing if you don't leave an answer. So hit pause right now and fucking type out your stupid answer. And then I'm going to rip it apart. But leave it, because I'm dying to know why you think he's a great fighter. When he's done nothing. You know, nothing in five years. And then do the same for Rigo. Tell me also why Rigo is on the pound, is on your pound for pound list. Because I know all you guys who got Ward on your pound for pound list also got Rigo on your pound for pound list. So tell me why he's on your pound for pound list too after not beating anyone inside the top 50 in five years and only has one name on his resume. And before Donaire, no one. He beat nobody. He beat nobodies, then Donaire, and nobodies. <laughs> And, and Flores, like, he ducked Flores, uh, first of all, before. And, uh, yeah, he's fighting him now because 
Flores fucking worked his way up to the Mando and Rigo has to fight him. Uh, but it's not like Flores is a great fighter either. I mean, unless Rigo aged really bad, he's going to beat the shit out of Flores. You know, Flores can only win by landing some, like, super lucky knockout punch. Rigo's going to destroy that kid unless he aged rapidly, you know. And he's old. He, he, he A lot of them Cubans lie about their age. We all know that. You know, like Luis Ortiz, that dude's fucking well over 40. I think Rigo's well over 40. Um, they, they, you know, they just all lie about their age. But uh, not all of them, but virtually all of them. Uh, and he looks old, old, like his face, you know, it's getting wrinkly almost, you know, you can see the skin is not, like, tight and young anymore, so he's getting old, you know, I mean, I'm 35, look at my face and look at Rigo's for crying out loud, I mean, come on, <laughs> is Rigo a couple years older than me, give me a break, you know what I mean, no, of course not, but, um, I mean, the... <laughs> I hear words this, you know, the greatest fighter, when he can't beat anybody that's sea level or higher while boxing within the rules. But guys like um, Manny Pacquiao, Gennady Golovkin, uh, Sergey Kovalev, Lomachenko, uh, Nicholas Walters, Keith Thurman, uh, Roman Gonzalez, um, uh, Oscar Valdez, Vosdick, uh, just and many, 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 many others. Leo Santa Cruz, uh, Carl Frampton, I mean, just many, many others can do it. But Ward can't. So how's he better than them? He's fucking not. They are all more talented than him. Because they can all do what he can't. And he can't do what they can. So tell me why he is better than anyone I just named. Tell me. And don't be like, resume! Because his resume is fucking nothing. His resume ain't shit. You know? Going the distance with fucking B-minus level fighters and shit. Are you kidding me? And just fouling your whole way through it. I mean, almost losing to Saki Obika. I mean, yeah, he's a really great fighter, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, my God, please. If he was such a great fighter, he should have fucking humiliated Bika like any other, like, great boxer, great boxer, always did. You know? They always just fucking toyed with Bika, but he couldn't, could he? No. Why not? Why not? Why would, why do you get so frustrated with Sullivan Barrera and actually lose, clearly lose, several rounds versus him. Hmm? And, and Sullivan Barrera was like a deer in headlights in that fight. That was the biggest step up he could have ever imagined, and all, all, all eyes were on him. He was not ready for that fight. And he was still able to frustrate the shit out of Andre Ward and win rounds so dominantly that Ward got so pissed he started fouling the shit out of him and got the only point ever taken away from him. So how's he so good? Huh? So please explain that to me. Please. Please, 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 because I'm dying. I've never gotten an answer. That's why I'm asking numerous times, because no one can, no one has ever answered that. Ever. You know what I mean? I mean, Ward isn't half the boxer y'all pretend he is. He's not. He just flat out isn't. And I don't know why y'all hype him up and pretend he's something he ain't. You know? Um, yo, Virgil said he trained uh, Andre Ward to knock out Kovalev. That's about the funniest shit I ever heard. First of all, Ward has no fucking power. Uh, he can keep you honest, but he can't hurt Kovalev at all. Uh, you can't show one punch in that whole 12 rounds of the first fight where a punch even affected Kovalev. The best left hook he landed 
Cove went like this, boom, took one step back, and just marched straight forward again. Like nothing. And then actually tagged the fuck out of Andre Ward with his straight right hand. It didn't bother him at all. And that was the best punch he landed. You can't, there's not one punch that affected Kovalev at all. But he's going to stop him? Dude, that guy has a beard. I mean, look at Big Pascal, full-fledged, light heavyweight, who was on the juice, working with Memo Heredia, teeing off with those right hands, landing them flush right on Kov's chin. Didn't bother him at all. Didn't bother him at all. You know, come on, man. Um, oh, oh. Uh, the, I almost forgot about that 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 uh, Kovalev and Kathy uh, Duva interview. Uh, Kovalev said that they asked Team Kov and Kathy Duva said that they asked Team Ward to have the rematch in New York City. My God, why couldn't they have? I fucking would have been there in a heartbeat. Uh, and Team Ward refused and. They, they wanted it in Vegas, and the reason was because they have connections in Vegas. That's the words that they said. They're, they have their connections in Vegas. What, what do they need connections for? What do they need connections for? Hmm. Is it to rob someone again? Huh? Is, you know, is James Prince's fighters, are they only ever going to win by robbery? Is that just how this is going to forever go? You know, is Shakur Stevenson going to be, like, the next one to where, you know, he gets just... Well, he's at least with Bob Aram, but that's going to turn out very ugly. Because Prince and Aram are not going to get along. Because Aram don't like pussies, and he don't want, you know... uh that kind of uh, stigma attached to one of his cards, and that's not going to end well at all. If if Shakur loses, Aram expects you to take that fucking L, and if there's a robbery on his card, he's going to get real pissed, and it's going to be at Prince, and there's going to be a big argument, and Prince is going to have to buy Shakur Stevenson out of that top rank contract, just like he bought uh, Floyd out of the top rank contract. I wonder if he'll pistol whip the shit out of uh, Shakur Stevenson and his team like uh, he did uh, Floyd Mayweather uh, and leave blood all over the gym. You know, we'll have to find out though, but I can, I guarantee you that ain't ending well. That's a terrible fit. James Prince uh, managing a Bob Arum fighter? No, no, not ending well at all. <clears throat> but. He, Coven, Kathy Duva said they wanted it in Vegas because that's where their connections are, and they don't have connections in New York City. Uh, it's on Fight Hub, I believe. Um, shit, I'm trying to remember what the thumbnail looks like to tell you. Uh, they're like at a, they're in like a diner, uh, sitting at a table. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the title is, but yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, uh, and, um, uh, well, and first of all, I mean, it's, that's not really that big of a secret. We already know that they have connections in, in, in Vegas and a lot of them because of how the first, uh, card went with Perez and Hooker and Ward and Kovalev, you know, so we already know that they can get their way in Vegas and that's why they wanted it there again, but I think... They thought it was going to happen that way again, but something must have went wrong, whether it was the commission stepped in and said, yo, you ain't fucking doing that shit here, or main events, you know, got, you know, went to Aegis, and they contacted the Russian mob, I mean, maybe they got, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Kurt CD's people to go, uh, punk the living shit out of, uh, James Prince, because, I'm sorry, the, you know, Prince might be a gangster and all, but he's a fucking, a, a little ghetto gangster, honestly. He ain't no fucking organized crime figure like the Russian mob, which is literally the most powerful mob in the world. It's only them and the cartels that can compete, you know. Only to, they, though they can compete with each other, other than that, they shut everybody down. So, 
I would almost guarantee you that somebody that from Cove's team made damn sure James Prince ain't gonna pull no fucking bullshit in this fight. You know, I mean, do you think for one second that, you know, Cove don't have gangster friends? He used to work for Russian gangsters, for crying out loud. He was the muscle of the Russian gangsters. It's in his documentary. The documentary's on YouTube. You know, he's talking about, uh, all the, uh, when he was in Russia at the gym, he goes, takes you to the gym, and they show the little picture of him when he was, you know, like a teenager, and him and all his buddies in the, uh, red and yellow, the Russian colors, you know, outside of the gym, and the gangsters all hung out at these gyms, and whenever they needed someone's legs broken, they'd be like, hey, Sergey and Alexander, you know, go break, you know, Pavel's fucking legs, he owes us some money, and Sergey would go break their fucking legs, you know, and he also said, uh, on record, again, this is also on YouTube, that um, right before uh, he got signed with main events, he had told Don Turner, I'm done, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not getting anywhere, I've been here for too long, no one will sign me, Golden Boy, everyone who's seeing me turning me down, uh, and Golden Boy turned him down and because they said, uh, you're Eastern European, we don't want Eastern European fighters. Uh, we want, you know, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Americans. You're Eastern European. That is bias against Eastern Europeans. They could have had the fucking light heavyweight king, and they passed on it because he was Eastern European. Same goes for Gennady Golovkin. Showtime and HBO both said, and he was the WBA world super champ, the super world uh, middleweight champion. And he was willing to defend his title. He, the first time he defended his title for thirty thousand dollars against Proxa, he was willing to take less. And Showtime, he, Tom Lawler begged Showtime and HBO for over a year to to get to to just allow fucking the world champion to defend his title on their network. And they said no because you're Eastern European. But there's no American bias. The American network didn't want an Eastern European on their fucking network. And one of the arguments was, well, look at what Bob Arum and HBO's doing with the Eastern Europeans now. Well, first of all, a lot of that has to do with the success of Gennady Golovkin and the Bob Arum is the greatest fucking promoter who has ever lived, first of all. And he don't give a shit where you come from. He just wants the best fighters that can win the big fights. So if the best fighters are coming out of Eastern Europe, that's where he's going and signing up as many of them as he can. Okay? You know, that, that's, he's not biased against anyone. He wants winners. So you can't use that argument. You know, at all, at all, you know, please. And HBO wants to put the best product on their network. And the, the best product, the best fighters are the Eastern European fighters right now, period. So they're going to fucking push it. And they're aligned with Bob Arum. So they're going to have a lot of Eastern European fighters because he's signing up the best fighters, the best amateurs in the world. So it's not like you can't say that proves there's no American bias. No, it just proves Bob Arum doesn't have an Amer uh, uh, a bias towards Americans or against Eastern Europeans. It just shows that he don't give a fuck. He just wants the greatest fighters. All right. So that argument is null and void also, you know. But, um, yeah, to, 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 um, hear that you know, what they did with John David Jackson really, and they really tried to get him to leave Kovalev, really makes me think, and I thought from jump, you know, I was even telling Max, I'm not, I don't think anything uh, like the what happened in the first time is going to happen this time um, and now what I know with the JDJ and the you know Prince and Virgil and all that it even makes me think more so that nothing fishy is going to happen because they wouldn't have tried to pull such a desperate move. I mean, that's a desperate move. It's quite possibly the most desperate move I've ever, ever heard of in boxing. Uh, so clearly some something isn't going their way or something ain't going the way they thought it would. Uh, you know, like, who knows? Uh, maybe... 
uh, maybe Russian gangsters stepped in and said, you ain't fucking ripping our fighters off, dude. You ain't doing this to our guys, you know, period. Um, or maybe someone else, maybe uh, main events already stepped in and paid the fucking refs a bunch of money to, to you know, not, uh, you know, fix the fight. Uh, who, there's a million things that could happen. Maybe the commission stepped in and said, don't you dare do that in our fucking state, you know, or you'll never put on another card here ever again. The MGM might have said something. A, a million things could have happened, but clearly something happened. Something clearly happened, and they're fucking scared, or else they wouldn't have done that, because that is unprecedented. That's as stooping as low as you can get. Uh, so, you know, and... and you know, come on, man. And, uh, oh, oh, in that same interview, Kathy Duva talks about um, Ward wanted a fucking ring bigger than 20 feet. So what, 22, 24, 26? Who fucking knows? You know, but they got him to, to come down. They, they got him to agree to a 20-foot ring, which is still fucking huge. The biggest ring Ali ever needed was 19 foot. All right? And that guy moved more than any heavyweight ever. So these guys do not need a 20-foot ring. They don't need a 19-foot ring. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. That's the smallest they could get Ward to agree to. So that kind of already lets me know what his game plan is going to be right there. But I'll get to that. And, um... <laughs> but Verge trained, uh... But Verge trained Ward to finish Kovalev, huh? Bullshit. He trained him to run, to foul, and to survive. That's why he wanted as big of an, a, a, a ring as possible so he could run around whenever Kovalev does cut him off. He could maul him and octopus him and, and fucking just try to survive and hope to get a decision. That's their fucking game plan. Plus being extremely juiced up and using all that strength to wrestle and try and tire him out. That's their game plan. That's Ward's game plan. Watch. You'll see. That I guarantee that's what he's going to do. Um, I don't think it's going to work. I do not. Um, period. You know? And not... A, well, first of all, he wants... He's not going to hope... That, that you know the judges just give it to Ward. He's gonna hope that Prince and Dubin paid the judges off again. Uh, but I think now he already knows that that's not happening, and that's why they called JDJ and tried to get him to leave Kovalev. Uh, so that lets you know that that lets me know something very bad is going on in the the, the Ward camp. Not that he's not in shape or anything, but that you know the corruption isn't going down like they thought they were going to get, you know. Um, and it seems people do really do not understand how to fucking score fights, man. It's this simple look. It, 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 and it sounds so stupid even after I repeat this, but some people are just stupid and you have to burn it into their head. Look, clean and effective punching. Underline, clean, underline, effective Okay, we already know Kovalev's punches are always going to be more effective, and we all we already know they're always going to be more clean. You know, because he fucking punches with knuckles. Ward doesn't. He slaps more than half of his punches. The only shots the fucking uh, uh, Ward ever hits with his knuckles are the jab and the two, and even the two ain't always fucking with the knuckles. I literally saw him hit fucking uh, uh, Sullivan Barrera with a two right here. He hit him like this. Like, what? You didn't think to just bend that wrist? You no, know, he went. It was like, what the fuck? You know, the kid don't know how to punch. Well, the guy don't know how to punch because his trainer is shit. You know? But it is what it is. Clean and effective punching. It's going to be so hard for Ward to take that uh, scoring criteria from Kovalev because he can land Kovalev can land less punches not many less but less and still fucking uh, win the round you know like if he is marching forward holding the center you know because you know 
effective aggression. All right, if he is attacking, effective, you know, effective again, underline effective. If he's coming at Ward and he's being effective by landing shots and the the, the shots are clean and effective which we know they are because he hurts Ward with fucking jabs. So, you know, if he's fucking hitting Ward with knuckles and he's the aggressor, I mean, how can Ward, uh, you know, if if Ward lands 10 and Kovalev lands 6, that's like an even round. Kovalev lands 7, it's Kov's round. Honestly. That's how the pro game works. This ain't the fucking amateurs where who no matter who just it don't matter how hard you hit and or who who's are more effective and all that. It's it's not about, you know, well I landed eleven, you landed ten, I win. No man. It's about who's causing more damage with their shots. So if my five cause more damage than your fucking eight, I won. It's that simple. You guys seem to not get this about professional boxing. This ain't the amateurs. Professional. Or the old amateurs. This is professional. You know? And ring generalship. If you have clean and effective punching, if you're the clean, effective puncher, like your punches are cleaner and more effective, and you're the effective aggressor, you're virtually always the ring general virtually always. I don't care if you're actually even dancing around because you're still the ring general. You know, you can be the ring general while boxing around, you know, being an outboxer. Not running around the peripheral of the ring, but, you know, moving in and out and you hitting all these different angles and things. Yeah, you're 100% cons- you're, you are the ring general. And most of the time, if you have the first two scoring criteria, you are the ring general. And we know that Kovalev is most of the time going to have the first two. So he's almost, he's again almost always going to have all three. The first top three. And the other one, defense. Defense is only even taken into consideration if the other three are so close, you need a deciding factor. So, like, you guys really need to learn how to fucking score. You know, it's not just, uh, like, I like Ward, so he just gets a 10 right off the fucking bat from me, unless he gets fucking whooped this round, then I'll change it to a 9. No, that's not how it works, and I know that's how a lot of you score fights. I, I know that for a fact. Because I'll see your scorecards in comment sections, I gave this round, you know, blah 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 blah, but, and then I'm like, how the fuck did you give that round to him? That he clear he got his ass whooped that round. So you you don't you don't score on the, the 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 true scoring criteria. You score on who you want to win, you know. And me me and Max always call it bookkeeping. You know, you're just trying to give your guy enough rounds anywhere you can to make somehow him come out the winner. And that's exactly what they did in Kovalev uh, Ward One. You know, the judges uh, were just bookkeeping the rounds. You know. Oh shit, uh, well, you know, fuck, Kovalev's kicking his ass now, gotta give Ward this round even though he, uh, lost. Oh shit, fuck, he has to win every round, oh fuck it, man, he gets every single round, boom, 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 even though he lost fucking three of them, you know. It's just, the, we know how it works, you know what I mean? And especially if you took fucking money, which they did, you know, and don't tell me they didn't. Because it's not like the, the first fight lets you know everything you need to know. That they were paying for their fighters to win. You don't lose every round. I can't say it enough. You cannot lose every round according to everybody and win. Alright. And you can't uh, lose every round but three and win. Plus get knocked the fuck down and win. So, yeah, there was corruption. That's not... You know, people score differently. I hate when people say that. If you score differently than clean, effective punching, effective aggression, effective aggression, ring generalship, then you, you're an idiot. You shouldn't be scoring. It's that simple. That's the only thing you should be scoring on. That's all it's about. 
So if you're like trying to make this story up, well, I mean, I, I, I like how, you know, he, he extends his punches and, you know, I like how he's flashy. That's not scoring criteria. You know, I literally heard people say that. Ward was just flashier. What? Like, wh what? That's, that's not a scoring criteria. I mean, my God, I heard Ward say he's going to try to clown uh, Kovalev. Did he not learn in the, fist, the first fight? Remember he tried to do the bolo punch, and fucking Kovalev just went bop and fucking knocked him back into the ropes and fucking hurt him? Yeah, try clowning him, Ward. And you don't remember what happened last time when you tried to clown him? He almost knocked you the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. That team is just fucking idiots. Total idiots. And it's not just because I don't like Ward. I mean, they're fucking idiots. You know, truly. And, um... This is one thing uh, about Ward's so-called vicious body attack that took so much out of Kovalev. Because you hear that all the time from these Ward fanboys, you know? That it's, it was a body attack that slowed Cove down. No, it wasn't. No, it was that he was doing three a day, sparring Yusick and Vosdick and going fucking ham in camp. He fucking, he, he peaked way too soon. It's that simple. And he came in heavy. Alright, it's that simple. And he's coming in much lighter this fight. Um, so it'll probably, probably be like, you know, uh... Lightest he ever came in was 181, on record anyway. I'd probably think he'd come in at like 185, 183, 185-ish. He's definitely coming in light. Um, and that's when he does the best. Uh, and he's in tremendous shape. Have y'all been watching his training footage? Because uh, I've been watching him and Wards. Uh, he's looking fucking great. He's looking great. He really is. Um, it's so fast. So fast. And this this footage was just from like a week ago, so he was pro he's you know lowering in weight. Um, right now he's only two pounds off from weight, so he was probably like five pounds. He was probably like one eighty then, and he was looking good, real like perfect, perfect. Like he was ready to go. Um, so if he comes in at right around that weight, like one eighty, one eighty three ish. Oof. My God, he was fast. His legs and reflexes and punches, they were just bow, 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 bow. Like, really fast. He was way faster than Ward. Uh, hands and foot. Faster. I was watching both of them and comparing them. Yes, he was faster. Um, and we saw he was faster in the first fight. You know? That's why that Ward couldn't do a single thing when he, he said, I can't outbox this guy. Because Kovalev's a better boxer. So he had to just charge at him and fucking maul him and wrestle and clinch and hit and hold and all that shit and hit him in the kidney fucking 50 times. The body work did, did look, look, holding and hitting to the body is not effective. It doesn't fucking take much out of you and you guys are acting like it fucking does or it did. It took a lot out of Kovalev. No, it doesn't okay? I mean Ward, you fucking Ward fanboys exaggerate the shit out of Ward's body work so much. I mean, which was, his body work was really, at minimum, at minimum, very conservative here, 30% kidney shots. Alright, if anything took something out of him, it was the fucking kidney shots. But, look, if I'm... If I'm holding on to your arm, or I'm, I'm have my arm under your arm, and I'm holding you around the back, all right, and you're and I'm leaning into you, how can I, how can I deliver punch? How can I deliver power? You know, or reach around and hit you in the kidney and really make it hurt? It's strictly an arm punch. You know, what now? It's not like I'm going leaning down and going boom and digging into your body boom and turning my whole hips into it you know wham or boom an uppercut to the solar plexus or a wham straight right to the solar plexus no I'm, or i'm holding your arm like this and going eh, eh, it's an arm punch that don't fucking take anything out of you i don't care if you hit me with 50 of them i can take 50 of them you know please i could probably take 50 from andre ward 
You know? And so I know Kovalev can. They're arm punches. Anyone you who box know arm punches don't do shit. Because you're not putting any weight behind them. And when Ward's inside, he's always holding. There was some good body punches, don't get me wrong, where he didn't hold and hit. But those few and far between. Few and far between. So it's like, come on, give me a break. And if they were taking so much out of him, how come in the, the, the what, uh, like, uh, ninth, tenth, uh, the, 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 from really like ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, he was fucking warred up. You know, there was some close rounds in there, but he was totally holding us. He was jumping all on Ward, bombing on him. If if he was so tired, like the commentators were making you guys think he was, and that's why you repeat it, then why was Ward the one running away? And why was Kovalev chasing him? Huh? Why? Why? It, it it wasn't fucking with him. All he did was he just he gassed strictly because he overtrained and peaked in camp too soon. So that's it wasn't the body work. He gassed before he even got attacked before his body was even attacked. So it's like don't dare say it was the body work. I mean my God, and he he still kicked Ward's ass anyway in those rounds. He still won the majority of the second half rounds. So, what are you talking about? You know, it's like insane. Like you guys just mim like repeat what you fucking heard uh, on uh, HBO. You know, Roy, who's a fucking huge Ward fanboy, and Max Kellerman, who's a huge Ward fanboy. They've both admitted it. So if you have two out of the three commentators who love fucking slurping Ward's knob. Uh, yeah, they're going to be extremely biased in their commentary. And you're going to buy into it. As I've seen many, many of you buy into it. You know, because you don't have a brain for yourself. You, you don't know what you're looking at. You just listen to them and be like, oh, that's what's happening. No, no. Turn the volume off and then watch it. And then do your post-fight video. And I'd love to hear what the fuck you can say then. You know, because I've watched so many of your post-fight videos, and all you do is repeat what, what the fucking HBO commentator said. <laughs> it's nothing original. It's just, you know, up, up the parroting of fucking HBO commentators. It's ridiculous, you know? Never any new insight. Or, or if it's new insight, it's like 78 saying, uh, fucking... Brooke was just letting Triple G punch himself out, and then he was going to come on strong. Like, yeah, he was just going to let Triple G break his other orbital bone, then come on strong. Oh, 78. 78, I love the brothers you'd introduce me to, so you're not even man enough to fight one-on-one? -on -one? You, you want to jump me, huh? Because you can't fight for shit, correct? Correct? You got a problem, dude. I'm in Pittsburgh. I'm in Pittsburgh, bitch. You know, you say you're balling out of control, right? Fly your fat ass up here, buddy. You know, I'll have you sign a waiver. We'll videotape it. We'll get right into the boxing ring and put it right up on YouTube. And I know you got a fucking 100 pounds minimum on me, but I fucking guarantee I humiliate you. Humiliate you. you please. Please. Come on. Come on up. I'm not fucking flying down there to get jumped. You literally said I would get jumped. You'll love the brothers I introduce you to. Like, how stupid are you? You know, I'm not dumb. I mean, come on. I'm going to go fly into someone else's neighborhood. I mean, I, I, won't, I would never jump someone because I have fucking a little dignity and I can actually handle myself. You know, what I, I'd pull up and you'd be like, "That's a, that guy's a racist, get him! And then all your little fucking goofball friends would jump me. You would, you even admitted it! So, like, what? <laughs> what? You know, show up in Pittsburgh, tell me what gym you're at, I'll fucking drive over there and beat the fuck out of you. It's that simple. And we'll videotape it. You know? Simple as that. You know? And you tried saying, well, since I have a problem with you that I should travel, um, you have a problem with me too, fat boy. So, you know, just fucking come here, you know?
And my problem with you is that you constantly fucking lie. So I like to to make fun of you and call you out on your fucking hypocrisy and double standards. Um, you know, you look like Fat Albert, so that's always good, you know, joke material. And um, that you're a fucking flat-out admitted racist, so I love making fun of you for that, too. You know? Yeah. I don't like you at all. At all. But I'm not fucking spending a bunch of money to come fucking fly down to fucking fight seven of your cousins or your brothers. You know? No. One-on-one. Me, 170 pound me versus 300 or 3 ton you, fucking giant, giant hippo, fucking hungry, hungry hippo, arca, 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 fucking eating all the marbles. Bring your fucking Billy badass to Pittsburgh, bitch. Like, I'm not fucking joking. I will fuck you up, kid. Like, please, play. Think, think, I'm, think I'm playing. Think I'm fucking playing. You know? Bring your ass to Pittsburgh. I'll pay for your Uber to get to the gym. I'll be in the gym. You'll sign the waiver. I will have no friends there. Just a video camera. My my, my coach will be there. All the gym people. No one's going to allow any funny business to go down. That will not happen. Just me and you will get into the ring. We'll put a video camera up on one of the turnbuckle posts. And get it on. And then we'll put it up on YouTube. Hmm? I mean, that sounds like a fucking great deal, if you ask me. So, you know. Ball's in your court, though. You know? But, uh... What the fuck would I fly out to wherever the fuck you are to meet all your brothers? Because you can't fight one-on-one. You know? It's that simple. You actually said that. How dumb are you? You know, like... You'd love the brothers I'd introduce you to, and you just like racist. Get them. Yeah, that's fucking. Yeah, I'm that I'm really that stupid. I'm gonna walk right into that. Fucking idiot, idiots, man. Fucking idiots. You know. So, and I know you're gonna see this. So, come on, man. Come on, tough guy. You know, tough guy. Bring your fucking friends. Who cares? They ain't gonna be able to do shit then. You know, they can watch you get fucked up. That's about it. But they can't do anything, you know? So, do what you want. But I had to mention that, you know, since you fucking wanted to act all tough guy and shit. Fucking cornball. But, um, shit, where was I now? Um, shit, where was I? I was talking about Ward's body work. Shit. Oh, 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 uh, and the, uh, it was the ninth round. I was talking about the eleventh round earlier, and then in the ninth round, um, this the, the, this is um, what uh, Precise showed in his bird video. It was in the ninth round, and you, you can go watch his video. Uh, Precise is it? It's his last one, I think, if, unless he put a new one up already. But it has bird in the title, um, and it's about award appreciation week. Um, it's ninth round. I think there's twenty some seconds left. And Ward lands five or six low blows, just one, two, three, just instant, boom, 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 boom. And Bird is just staring right at it and does absolutely nothing. I mean, Bird is staring right at the dick shots and does nothing, nothing. Don't even fucking warn him. Doesn't even warn Ward. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, and Kellerman just makes me sick with his fucking just, oh my god, his love of fucking Ward and Floyd. Now he just like had the double standards, you know. And the perfect example is, is of him saying why that Floyd and Ward are so great because they know how to manipulate the rules, a.k.a. fucking cheat. They don't manipulate the rules. The refs allow them to cheat. But then... When Klitschko does nothing but a jab and grab, he literally almost had a heart attack on national TV. It's, like, unbelievable. Like, and how can... This guy needs fired instantly. Like, this dude should not have a job at all. Like, let him, let him stay on the ESPN show with Sports Nation or whatever. I actually like that show. Um, uh, he's a little bit of a cuck, but he can stay on that show. But 
boxing, no, man. He's way too biased. He's too involved in it, something. He needs to take a break at least. Take a year off or something, maybe when he comes back. I used to like him a lot on Friday Night Fights, but um, just over the years, I, I don't know, man. He's just gotten way, way too biased for my for my taste, man. Way too biased. Um, and it, you know, it, it, it affects the way people think. Uh, like, it affects what they think they're seeing, you know, because when you have someone you think is an expert telling you bullshit, but, you know, you're not maybe savvy enough to, to know that what they're telling you is bullshit, you think it's the truth. And, it, you know, you just, you're not maybe, you think you're maybe not smart enough to, because you're not a supposed expert like you think he is, so you buy into what he's trying to sell you. You know what I mean? But, um... <clears throat> Yeah, about uh, uh, look at how precise is the only one that did a video on. Um, I talked about it. A couple people talked about it, uh, but Ward, uh, that Ward uh, video that Precise did with all the fucking acne and boils and all that shit, and how he's so much bigger, and you know when he's way bigger, the biggest he's ever been, the most shredded he's ever been, and boils all over the place. I mean, it's fucking clear as day. Either that or he got the plague. You know what I mean? So come on. But um, imagine if Golovkin moved up to 168 pounds, put 15 pounds on, you know, because he has a swimmer's build, so he puts 15 pounds on, but he don't have a swimmer's build no more. He's fucking ripped and has boils all over his body. It'd be fucking World War Three. It'd be 500 videos every day for 17 years. Like, come on. But y'all won't say a thing about Andre Ward and his fucking boils and all brand new muscles. Won't say a thing. Like, come on. Come on. But that's not American bias? Give me a break. Because don't, don't dare say, no, we'd be, we wouldn't say anything about uh, Gennady Golovkin either. Because you call him a fucking a cheater all the time. And he's doing Vada 365, and you, you even say he loads his gloves and shit. I mean, but then when you, when, uh, Precise did that great video with Cunningham proving he fucking, him and Nazim, B Hop's fucking trainer too, were fucking tampering with their gloves, no one said a fucking peep about that, did they? You love the stories of loaded gloves, but as soon as it was fucking Nazim and Cunningham and Beehop, it was mum's the fucking word, huh? Yeah, but when it was an Eastern European, that didn't even do anything. You just accused, you guys all accused every Eastern European of loading gloves and being on roids. But then when the, the, the fucking Americans are caught on roids and fucking loading gloves and all, or tampering with gloves anyway, nothing is said about it. That is fucking as factual as you get that there's American bias. And a lot of it and bias against Eastern Europeans. So to say there is none, you fucking make an ass out of yourself. Beeb actually did it. I was talking to him last night. He actually admitted that there is American bias. Uh, he said, yeah, there is some American bias. He said that uh, it may not be as bad as... Uh, some people make it out to be, uh, maybe like myself, but um, that there definitely is some. So he changed his stance a bit on that. He don't believe that there's zero American bias anymore. Um, but which I can respect that because at least he, you know, opened up his mind and you know took the new information in and was like, yeah, yeah, there's definitely some American bias now. He so that's cool. But uh, I think it's more prevalent than he still thinks it is. Um, but Kovalev's game plan, I, I told you awards is, it's run, survive, maul, and, you know, that's it, you know, just try to wear out Kovalev by brand new steroid muscles hugging all over him and shit, but Kovalev got to keep him the fuck away, and that's what JD said, uh, JDJ said, they asked him, um, because one of the interviewers, I don't know who it was, I couldn't see it, but he said, you know Ward's gonna foul, he does it every single fight, um, so what are you doing to prepare for that? And he goes, well, first of all, we already have a plan in case he is inside, but more so than that, because we don't want to even have to deal with possibly getting elbowed in the head and, you know, head-butted and low-blowed and all that. So the, the main thing is to, to never let him even get inside, you know. So that's totally 
good news and key for them if they want to win. Um, <clears throat> but what Kovalev needs to do is jab, 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 dude. Jab everywhere. The head, the chest, the, the fucking throat, the solar plexus, shoulders, the arms, the you know, chest, everywhere. Everywhere. And especially the body. He he, he, needs, he wasn't throwing enough, you know, jabs to the body, man. He wasn't. And that, that's one of his best weapons, man. I mean, his body work is some of the greatest body work in the game. His jab to the body literally breaks fucking bones. Bones. Not one bone. Bones. Plural. I mean, it, it's happened, you know what I mean, multiple times. So, yeah, he needs to keep cracking to that body with that jab. And straight rights to the body, too. Um, and legs, legs, legs. He needs to constantly be on the move. Keep Ward on the outside with that jab and that footwork. And, you know, keep moving at different angles. You know, either moving out at angles, never go straight back. Um, and if he is going to go straight back, be ready to fire either a straight, straight down the pipe shots or uppercuts. Um, cause, you know, Ward, Ward likes to jab and then he'll come in like this and then he likes to shoot up, you know, so when he goes straight in, rip that fucking uppercut and lift his head straight up, lift it up. And if you can, left hook him, you know, lift him up, boom. I mean, that, that was always one of my favorite combos. I like the five two actually, you know, lift him with the, the left uppercut and then drive it straight back. So boom, bam was a great combo. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, Kovalev's great with that or what, if he you know, likes it or not. I don't know. Um, but he definitely needs to, when attack, I mean, even when he's, you know, if Ward's coming at him, you know, go out at angles, obviously, that's smart. But it, it and, you know, common sense. But if he is going back, be ready to fire. Because if Ward's coming straight at you, he's going to punch. So, be ready to either punch with him, you know, punch with him, because once he punches, I mean, he's open, so, and he ain't gonna be able to slip at the same time while he's punching, like, if he's throwing a straight right, he's gonna be right there, you know, just tilt over, wham, you know, so he definitely needs to be focusing on that, and when he's attacking, he needs to, to, to be coming in attacking from different angles, you know, don't ever just keep coming in straight, or just, like he used to always do, just keep he does just come in all different angles, you know, um, and straight punches, straight punches, at least for a while, you know, start, you know, if you hurt him with a shot, then open the fuck up, you know, don't shoot your load and start, you know, just, you know, blow your load and gas again, but straight punches, straight down the pipe, because, you know, keep the gloves up, boom, 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 it's going to protect himself, you know, and it's going to make it a lot harder for uh, Ward to land on him. Because remember, he gets much more extension than Ward. And, you know, Ward's money shot is the left hook. But what's going to get there first? What? What? Straight line. Boom. Right? And Kovalev has his two best punches. Or straight. One, two, one, two. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Right down the pipe. Um, Start hitting him in the chest, you know, work up, work up, work up, and boom, right in the chin, and start hitting him in the face, you know, start hitting him all over the shoulders. I always tell anyone who that's fighting a slick fighter, you know, um, aim for the chest. Always aim for the chest, and slowly, as you get that, because, like, look, I'm here, right? I go to move, my chest's still right there. You know, my I just moved my head off center, but my chest's still right there. So always, you know, bow, or, wait, what are they? Boom, I'm gonna, I don't want shit, how's that, I'm trying to get that in the camera, bam, right into the chest, you know, the head's off center, but the chest is still there, you know, so you keep cracking that, and then you keep working it up, working it up, and you get where their head is going to be, and then you pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, and now you're hitting him right on the chin, right on the chin, so he, hopefully, you know, he's doing that, that's what, I, 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 I always give that advice to, 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 to guys who are fighting like slick type fighters and I don't consider Ward a slick fighter but he does like to move his head off center a lot uh, he, like w when he jabs he'll pull you know a jab over here or throw a straight right and come over here so he definitely uh, 
keeps his head off center well, uh, very well. That's one thing he does good. Um, and I, I, that is something he actually does good. I'll give him a lot of props on that. He's good at keeping his head off center. Um, Kovalev needs to faint, 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 faint. A lot of faints, you know. And not just like the little faints. I'm talking like big ones. Like he's really going to come in. And then BAM! Because Ward's going to fall for it every fucking time. Because if you don't bite on that faint, what if it's the real shot? I mean, we know a jab will fuck Ward up. It already has. I mean, he knows that jab. A jab could knock him out, honestly. I mean, look what it just did to Pascal. I mean, I, I, we saw what it did to Ward, too. So uh, you don't want to not bite on that faint. Because if what if it isn't a faint? You're going to be in trouble. You know, so he needs a lot of feints, but make them look like they're not like little, little things like this. No, like, like you're really coming in, really coming in and then bow, because he's going to bite on every one of them. So you want to keep them coming, keep them coming. He gave up on his feints big time in that second half. And I didn't like that. The first half he was using them and was having a ton of success with his jab. Uh, but then he just. I don't know if he thought that he was uh, just going to land the big one and knock him out um, or whatever. Because, you know, a lot of power punchers get that. When they once they know they can hurt you, and even when they're hurting you with jabs or rights, and you, they're just hurting you all the time, they're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch this guy eventually. We've seen it how many times, you know. He needs to not do that. He needs to follow the B-Hop blueprint, what he did to B-Hop. Because I'm going to be real with you. B-Hop is a fucking better fighter than... Andre Ward. There's no doubt about that. Um, now, yeah, he was fighting an older B-Hop, uh, but at the same time, 90% of you guys picked B-Hop to fucking school Kovalev. I sure did not. Um, I picked Kovalev to win. And uh, the... Ward does, doesn't have the skills that B-Hop has. Um, he has a different repertoire, but he is not as talented as B Hop. He might be as talented as the B Hop that Kovalev fought at that time. Uh well he is as talented as the B Hop that Kovalev fought at that time. I'd probably say he's more talented. But um either way, that's still the blueprint. I mean, just keep pecking him. Remember how he would hit uh uh B Hop anywhere? He wasn't going for the head. He was head hunting with Ward big time and that's why I think he was just figuring, I'm gonna catch this guy. I'm gonna hit him in the jaw, he's out. But with B-Hop, he wasn't doing that. He was hitting him anywhere and everywhere. Remember how many times he just kept racking him to the chest and racking him to the chest, racking him to the body? And literally, I mean, the infamous picture where Hopkins like this, like freaking out because, you know, he knows what's coming. And B-Hop said that jab is a power punch. So, shit, keep jabbing him to the solar plexus. You know, you want to see how body work destroys someone? <laughs> Kovalev's body work will destroy Ward. And that, JDJ already said that they are focusing big time on their body work because they really hardly used any of it in that first fight. And your body don't go anywhere. You can move your head off center. Your body ain't going nowhere. That body's going to be right where it is, right above your fucking hips. You know, and you can't move your you know, hips off center. So they're staying right there. You're body's going to be right there. Solar plexus can only move about a quarter of an inch. You know, so you'll crack that shit every time. And Cove's going to be lighter, so he's going to be a bit faster. That's going to benefit him. You know, and, and he, in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, in and out, hitting different angles. Don't, don't stay in there with him, because that's what Ward's plan is. That's why he packed on all that muscle, took all that juice, because he wants to latch all over him and try to tire him out and Keep punching, punching them in the kidneys, punching them in the dick, punching them in the thighs, in the hips, rabbit punching them, elbowing them in the head, all that dirty shit. And, you know, hopefully get a decision, you know. Uh, don't, don't let him keep feigning him. He won't be coming in when you're feigning and cracking hard jabs, and a lot of them, you know. Uh, I saw him say that uh, his game plan is punch, 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 punch. And it needs to be, just not wild punches, you know, um, straight punches till you hurt him. Then, you know, if he goes like down or something, then whack him and whack him. 
You know, and like uh, JDJ said, like he comes in with the headbutt and he does, you know, push him down. Just take that right hand and smash his ribs as hard as you possibly can. And see how many times he keeps coming in. You know, Cove wasn't doing that. He was just holding his head. He'd just push him down and then just be like, break? All right, break. Push him down and wham! Like he uh, uh, always did the Pascal. Like he always did the Pascal. But he kind of just like totally vacated. Excuse me. Vacated all uh, body work uh, versus Ward. And it's not like it's hard to land body body shots on him or anything. Uh, he was just head hunting, you know, because that second round he was like, shit, I didn't even hit the guy flush and I almost knocked him out. And in the first round he hit him with a jab and hurt him bad. So it was like first two rounds he's like, I'm hurting this guy with everything. And then it just became a head hunt, you know, from then on. So he really needs to. to have a full game plan. Same game plan he had in every other fight, truly. You know, no head hunting, man. Just just listen to John David Jackson. John David Jackson needs to burn this game plan into his head every single break in between every round. You know, stay focused, keep them jabs pumping, keep them feints pumping, keep attacking that body, keep shooting right down the st straight punches, straight punches, straight punches till you hurt him. If he hunches over because he's hurt, whack him wherever, shoulders, back, uh, not back, I mean ribs, you know, uh, side of his head, wherever, just whack him if he gets hurt and hunches down, crack him, uppercut, anything, that's when you can throw your big giant power punches, but... You know, if you're up and boxing with him, shoot the straight ones. You know, because he's, he's going to beat Ward at that game every time. Ward he, it, it will admit that. He has admitted that. You know, um, so, yeah, you know, that, that'd be mine for sure. And, and, I don't, I don't like when fighters do this, but you really have no fucking choice with Ward. Kovalev needs to complain to the referee constantly about Ward's fouls. John David Jackson and Don Turner do also. They but they need to make it a huge issue of fucking the biggest issue of the fight. You know, if he's fouling, make it the biggest issue of the fight. I mean, and try to get a point or two taken from Ward. It, it's that simple. You know, if you get low blowed uh, and the ref asks, are you okay? Play like B-Hop used to do. Be like, no, I need a second. Because that's immediately... You know, going to put pressure on the ref to take a point if it happens like the, a second time. You get low bloat, are you okay? Nope, need a minute. And, oh, oh, point. Now you just got a 10-8 round. You didn't really need the time, but you just got a 10-8 round. You know, B-Hop was a genius with that shit. You know, take advantage of it. And they said they're going to do it. They said, hey, if he starts fouling, we are going to complain to the ref and play it up. You know, let them know this is fucking bullshit. And they need to start it from the locker room, right in the locker room. Like, if you don't check this motherfucker from jump, we're going to, you know, make it so obvious throughout the whole entire fight, you know. And, but uh, the, the only thing is, you know, that when Kovalev's complaining, he can't, like, like if you remember, like, when Mike Tyson got headbutted by Evander Holyfield, he, his gloves would be, like, here. And he'd put him down here and just look over at Mills and be like, he fucking headbutted me, whack, and then get punched. You know, don't do that. You know, make sure you're, you know, you're defending yourself while you're complaining, you know. Like, if you get hit, hurry up, take a step back, then complain to the ref while still keeping your hands up in case he's trying to jump in on you or something. And make JDJ in between the rounds have, you know, Don Turner or someone walk along the side of the ropes and screaming at the ref, rah, 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 make it a big, big issue. You know, that way they, they could probably get a point taken away that way. At least one, you know, uh, which can't hurt. I mean, it would be very easy to get a point taken away from Ward. I think they could probably get two if they push it hard enough. Um, they could have in the first fight. I mean, when he got elbowed, he should have played that up. Uh, when he got fucking uh, low blowed, he should have played that up. When he got need, he should have played that up, and he fucking would have won the fight. I guarantee you, if he played all three of them up, a point would have been taken, and boom, he would have won that round in a 10-8 fashion and won the fight. You know, that simple. But hey, they—they're not pussies. They don't cry. They're not like crybabies like B-Hop. So, but I mean, 
if you're up against it, like fighting a guy like Ward, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, man. You know, it's that simple. I, mean, I, I wouldn't hold it against him. It's not like he does it every fight or something like that. And if he started to, then I wouldn't like him. But doing it versus Ward, it's justified. I mean, come on, man. Please, you know. And, uh, I mean... Oh, Cove's really been working uh, on getting... If you've been watching his workout footage, he's really been working on getting low and bobbing and weaving. Um, I'm wondering if... Uh, He's planning on getting under uh, Ward's head himself and popping up and headbutting him his damn self. You know, I, I fucking would. You know, I would. Uh, and I when I popped up, though, I wouldn't just pop up like Ward, like, and just I'd actually throw a punch like a throwaway punch. Just like, ah, oh, I was trying to punch him. I'm sorry, my head just crashed into his. Like, uh, Evander Holyfield was the best with, you know, headbutting you while throwing a throwaway punch. So you could be like, I was throwing a punch. Our heads just collided and then they can't take a point from you. Because there's no proof that you weren't trying to actually land the punch and the heads didn't just accidentally clash. You know, keep doing that. Do that once or twice to Ward. He'll learn his damn lesson. And then you're, you know, you'll be, you'll be good. You know, you'll be real good. Um, anything else I wanted to say? Um, there's something else I wanted to say about the press conference. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, when Cove left the press conference, they were saying that's a sign of him being weak. Dude, the guy has been listening to all those scumbags yap, 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 yap. And he's told us for the last week... I'm done talking. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to fucking kick this guy's ass. You know? So he came up, said his little piece, and was like, I'm gone. You know? He's like, fuck you guys. You know? Well, he can't beat them up. Trust me. He wants to just go over there and knock Prince's fucking teeth out. You know? And then choke fucking Ward to death. But he can't, so he got to wait till Saturday so he don't go to prison. So he's just like, I'm out of here. You know? There's... Like Virgil's like he just the, he showed the he showed you the press what he thinks of you. No, he's showing like what honorable fucking man would want to sit there and listen to all this shit talking from sexual predators who are fucking thieves, dishonorable sexual predator thieves. Why would you want to sit at a fucking uh and a, a, a podium with these guys? You know why? I'd leave, too. I wouldn't want to be around those people in a million years. Like, so, yeah, I'd have been fucking gone, too. I'd have did my bare minimum, too. You know? He said this for the last couple of days. I'm done talking. I just want to get in the ring. You know? He's making weight. He's fucking irritated. You know, shit. You're always going to be irritated. I mean, shit. And you could be like, well, Ward wasn't. Well, hey, whatever. That's him. He's not as fucking mean of a dude as Kovalev. Kovalev's a fucking gangster. Ward ain't. You know, Ward's a little pansy. You know what I mean? Shit. I mean, so... I didn't understand how they are trying to make that to be like a bad thing. Who would want to sit there and listen to these extreme... What man, man's man, would want to sit there and listen to these... Uh, uh, a sexual predator, uh, a bunch of scumbags, talk all this shit on you? You know? Like, why? When you can't kick their ass. He has to just sit there and take it? He's like, F why? Why would you? You'd fucking leave, too. Shit. And he said, fuck that. I'm out of here. And I'm not going to sit here and listen to these guys talk shit. He probably wanted to murder them. But he couldn't. So he's like, I'm, I'm gone, you know? I'll, he said, I'm done talking. You know, I'm going to make my statement on Saturday. They can do all the talking they want, you know? <laughs> I did like when Kathy said, you know, I know these little uh, shirts with all your little uh, promotions. Is this the, the, the towel you're going to throw in for Andre Ward, Virgil? <laughs> you know, I like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't think there was anything wrong with what Kovalev did, honestly. It's not because I'm a fan of him or anything. I totally would have done the same fucking thing. Honestly, I wouldn't want to be around those guys at all. They're talking all kinds of shit and you can't beat them up. Like, why? You know, just walk away. He did what a grown-up does. Walk away. 
You know, why be involved with list, sitting there listening to these guys where you might snap out, you know, and then the fight's off or you're in handcuffs. You know, screw that. Just wait till Saturday and knock them the fuck out. You know, and then yap all you want, you know, and then run your mouth all day to them and let them see how it feels. You know, which is what he's going to do. But, uh... <clears throat> Let me know your pick and uh, why if you want, you know. But, um, yeah, give me your thoughts, man. Thunder on Boxing Talk. Oh, well, uh, obviously I'm picking Kovalev. I gave that much. I I'm actually picking him by stoppage. Uh, I don't know what round, but stoppage some somewhere along the fight. You know, if I had to, had to pick, I'd say, like, mid-late rounds, somewhere like 8, 9, 10, somewhere around there. Uh, but could happen in the fucking third, who knows, too, you know, it's Kovalev, so, uh, but, yeah, give me your thoughts, man, Thunder on Box, talk, peace.